I've played World of Warcraft for over 15 years, but lately it just doesn't feel like the MMORPG experience I fell in love with all those years ago, and I've just lost my passion for playing it. So now, I'm giving Final Fantasy XIV a try for the first time, and documenting my experience as I play through the game. Today is day 4 of that journey. What is up everyone? Welcome to day four of this incredible adventure through this beautiful game. This has been a crazy four days. I have loved every minute of this game and it has completely taken my breath away so far. The, the sense of adventure, community, and all the support on YouTube has made it so much better. Whether you've been here since day one, or whether you're just watching this as your first video, I'm so happy that you've taken the time to watch, like, comment, or join the Discord, whatever you've done, I appreciate it so much. If I've not had a chance to reply to one of your comments, I'm so sorry. Everything's overwhelmed me a little bit. There's, there's more support than I ever imagined, but just know I'm so thankful and I'm trying to read and reply to everything as I get a chance. If you've come up to me in game, you can see here, there's a few people have come and chat. I take time to sit and talk to people and yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed by the support, but thank you all so much. Also, just getting it out of the way straight away before I show anything. This is day four of Final Fantasy and my experience, so do expect spoilers for main story quests or other quests throughout from here. Other than that, let's get straight into day four. So day four started pretty productive with a dungeon. So this was the Copper Bell Mines, I believe. This is a pretty cool one. I thought the, uh, the, the the enemies and the combat was a little flat throughout, but I really like the progression through. You have to like pick up these powders and blast your way through the mines to fight these different bosses. I did really like it. After about halfway, I started to grow on me. Uh, I'm not sure how replayable this one is. I don't know what your guys' thoughts on this one. But the final boss was super interesting. I'll try and show that next. So you fight this big slime. I think this is after we did the first bit. So you fight this huge slime and basically you don't attack the slime kind of because you don't do much damage to it. What you need to do is there's this big, uh, this big lever in the middle and when it activates, you have to push it down and a, uh, a burning cap appears. And then what happens is this, this fiery burning cap, which just spawned as you can see, this will grow and then it will explode. And when it explodes, it will destroy the slimes which is really, really cool. I, I love when there's non-combat mechanics. I think they add so much to the game because, I mean, nobody wants to just sit and, you know, tank and spank a boss for 20 minutes. But yeah, you can see here it blows up and then these two slimes explode and then four smaller ones spawn, which is really, really cool. Um, and then you do it again and they break down into eight, I think. And then you can start grinding them down with uh, physical attacks or magic, whatever. So yeah, this was a super cool ending to this dungeon. Um, I left it with a really good experience. I did really like it. In hindsight, I think the start was kind of slow, but it really picked up and really surprised me at the end. And then I got ambushed by two people much smaller than me. This is going to be a recurring theme, I think, throughout this series. Um, had a lot of people come up to me, but yeah, this is pretty funny. And then huge victory. I finally starting to understand the story. This is such a big deal because I've been so confused for so long, but by day four, it's starting to come together. So the, the Skions of the Seventh Dawn, I think they're called, I, we join those and you learn a lot more about the, the people the enemies, the, the power that was in you all along, um, the primals, and it's all, it's not as overwhelming as it was, but it's starting to come together a little bit more. Um, and I thought this was a really cool part of the story. It definitely picked up here from, you know, you're a small adventure in a small town to you're a part of something really big. And then I started the fishing quest and somebody came up and gave me a uh, salt and pepper seal, like one of my first minions. So I had a little seal companion while I was fishing, which was which was super cool. I really like it. Um, I really like the minions in the game. They're so they're so creative and well-designed and they're pretty cute. And then while I was fishing and doing absolutely nothing productive, somebody in the Discord told me about these retainers and that I can do that now. Um, so yeah, I went, and, I went and tried this and you can make your own little butler and there's like a full character customization. And for some reason I was drawn to the, to the bunny women and I don't know why. So then I, yeah, I tried to make this, uh, this Fiera as, as edgy as me, you know, short hair, uh, pink highlights, or red highlights. Oh, that was pretty cool. I thought she looked pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. So yeah, that's, that was my first retainer made. I'm still not too sure what to do with them. Um, I know you can sell stuff on the market with her, but I'm not really sure how best to utilize them. If anyone knows down below what I should be doing, I'm around level 25. So yeah, any advice on that, I'd really appreciate. And then of course we got back to the main story. <laughs> we did it. I did some more fishing. So I did the uh, the level five and level 10 fishing quest, which I really, I don't know why, but I really enjoy fishing. Someone told me you can go out on boats as well. I've not seen that yet, but that sounds really cool. 
I find fishing super relaxing. Uh, just the music is just incredible. I honestly just sit here editing. I just have the music in the background while I'm sat AFK somewhere. Um, and yeah, just fishing every now and again is just so peaceful. But then, you know, we've got to do something productive. So I went back to the main story and there's, there's this little bit when you're doing the, um, the main story and you're, you're learning about the primals and you're doing um, the, like the introduction to the skions. And I don't know if it's pronounced like, well, skions or skions, I don't know, or scions. Um, but I was getting a little bit um, bored of all the walking around. It was like walk and talk, walk and talk. And I was, I was like waiting for a bit of combat for a while. But then something incredible happened that I was not expecting and it completely blew me away. So yeah, you get betrayed and captured by these, these huge brute creatures. And this was, this was a, such a cool cutscene. I really, really like this. Uh, and then as you're captured, you get to queue up for your first trial. And oh my days, I did not know this game could get any cooler. You get to fight it for it. The, I've played I've played m most of the the last you know Final Fantasy games like probably the most recent six Final Fantasy games, so I, I'm a big fan of like the summons and these big these big primals these monsters and stuff, and this cutscene was incredible. I can't believe this happens at like 20. I was on a, I was on voice call uh, on Discord with some people who was helping me do this, and I I, I was literally speechless. They were like, "You okay?" And I was like, "Yeah." I, I, <laughs> this cutscene has just blown me away. I thought it was just going to be like some some cutscene, and then you fight like one of his minions, or you fight like a spawn of Ifrit. But no, it's, it's a full fight with Ifrit. Um, and yeah, it was it was super easy. We completely deleted him. Yeah, we yeah we 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 wiped. <laughs> I didn't understand the mechanics. And there's another Sprout in the group who we we were both just focusing on the boss, but he summons like this big nail, and you have to switch from him to this uh, this thing he spawns, and you have to de destroy the the uh, the nail before he jumps into the air. Otherwise it was a wipe and yeah, we wiped. So the second time, knowing what to do, uh, the leaders who knew knew what they were doing gave us a pep talk and we, we overcame the boss. It was so cool. Like w one thing that really is strange about, like I play World of Warcraft and this is a comparison video, I guess a little bit, is all of the, the best part of the game is end game. The leveling experience, they, people just pay to skip leveling because, and they boost because leveling just is not the main experience in World of Warcraft. But to do one of these trials at level 20 as part of the story, to fight Ifrit in this epic cutscene and this epic uh, this epic part of the adventure, halfway through the story or like partway through the story, really, really shocked me. I love that they put so much effort into the leveling process and the, the story. Incredible. Yeah, we got another crystal. Amazing. Really enjoyed this. Um, this has been my favorite thing so far in the whole, the whole time I've played. It completely has blown me away. One, one other thing I like, I don't know how much trials are used at the end game. I try, everyone's been really nice and not giving me any spoilers, so I super appreciate that. But if trials are like this all the way through, I really like that you can just jump in and fight a boss. Like, no trash. Um, normally, if you wipe in World of Warcraft, then you have to go and trawl through trash or re spend 15 minutes getting back to where you were. But on this, we, we died. One second later, we're back at the start and we fight it again. And I, I'm all for that. I think that's an incredible thing. And I don't know if that's just a leveling feature or if that's progresses all the way through to end game, but I'm all for that. I, I really, really like that. This is my number one best thing I've seen so far. Actually, the job system is the best thing I've seen so far. This is the second best thing about Final Fantasy I've experienced so far. And I love it. And then we go to this little trash mountain area, this uh, this junkyard area, and you learn about materia. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm always honest in these videos. I did this quest, I read every single thing. I have no idea how Materia works. Maybe it was not explained well, maybe it was overwhelming, but coming straight out of what I was doing and into this, I really found it hard to understand. If I should be focusing on this as part of leveling, let me know, because I'm just ignoring it right now. My understanding is you can deconstruct items and then put Materia in other items. It seems a little bit like gem slots in World of Warcraft, but I really, really, really don't follow it. But let me know if I should be worried about this now or if I can just carry on ignoring it um, just be blissfully ignorant for another few levels. Uh, but yeah, materia, learn, system, unlocked, yes. I also took a lot of people's advice and uh, removed the helmet because I like having my character's face out. I, um, yeah, didn't know how to do that. So thank you for everyone who let me know about that feature. Really like it. There was no slack in today. It was straight into more main story. So I felt really confused at the start. Like if you've seen like the first video, the introduction to so many characters completely overwhelmed me. But 
coming into this day, day four, getting introduced to these people was, it was like closure. It was so good to finally get more information. It's something I wanted for a long time, more information on who the leaders were, what the, because you know, you've got these three towns that you visit and I didn't know the importance of them or why, why I would, what, the, the lore of them really. And it's so good to get that from these little cutscenes. And then it was time for the Gridania one. Um, I think because I'd already done my introduction in Gridania, I kind of knew a lot about this leader. So it wasn't as, um, I don't know, it wasn't as fresh. But it was still cool to um, to see more, to, you know, to see more of that story. And then it was on to Limsa Limosa, the, the port city. And for some reason, this one really inspired me. I don't know why. I think I really like the leader here, this... Uh, this 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 speech I felt really cool. I really like like the ship aesthetic, the port aesthetic. I really like just chilling on the port and doing a bit of fishing. So yeah, I think I'd spent a lot of time in this town. Uh, someone did tell me that if you stay in Limsa Limosa, Limsa Limosa too long, then there's a lot of RP and some crazy stuff can happen. But I don't know what they're talking about really. And a few people in the comments have been telling me to wiggle my ears. So there you go, happy. <laughs> and then I had to make the decision of which. Uh, which company to join? And I was I was a little torn here. I, I really liked my starting area of Gridania, but I, I felt like I'd left there and I hadn't really gone back since. And I wasn't I didn't feel attached to the leader. And then it was so it was between um it was between the flame guys and then the maelstrom. And I really like the leader of the uh, the flame company, but I really don't like the city. And then Limsa Limosa, I really like the aesthetic of the city and I like just the feel and the noise and the sound, the music, um, and I really like the leader. So this was this was the choice I went for. I decided to go with the Maelstrom, and yeah, I haven't regretted it yet. And then someone told me, after joining a company, you can get your first Chocobo, and I've been looking forward to this since day one. People were people were saying literally in the day one comments, "Oh, you can go get your Chocobo soon." It felt a lot longer away than people were saying, but yeah, maybe I was putting off the story too much. But I, I had a big grind today to get through the story. I wanted to make progress, and yeah. I got my Chocobo and I named it Shadow Facts. I really hope you get that reference, Lord of the Rings. And along the way, people have been trading me um, these bardings and people keep giving me stuff. I don't know if it's like a culture thing on uh, Final Fantasy XIV. They people just come up to me, add me as a friend and give me items. And I keep saying like, you don't have to. And they go, no, 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 please take it. And someone gave me this Horde barding. And I think this looks pretty cool. I really, really like this. Um, so yeah, we've, we've finally got a Chocobo. And it's time for that fast mount speed. I think the Chocobos are so cool. I, I played Final Fantasy VII was probably like my my biggest interaction with Chocobos and you do the racing and everything. And like when you run on the Chocobo and you get the, the Chocobo race music, it's so cool. I, I literally just sat looking at myself for so long because I just thought, I was just so happy to finally get to this, this part of the game. And yeah, I feel like today was a really productive day. I, you know, did my first trial the grand company got my chocobo um i really did push hard to try and do a lot of story content because i felt like i was slacking a little behind but i feel like i made a lot of progress um so i'm probably gonna have more of a slack off day tomorrow maybe try some new jobs uh, some new you know um classes um try some new of the professions uh i can't remember what they're called craft crafting jobs um yeah i want to try more things tomorrow maybe do some glam you know i heard a lot about how glam works so i'm probably going to try that but yeah all, all i did for the rest of the day was just chill out with people a lot of people came up and said hi i think one person came up and said hi i sat down to speak to them and then another turned up and then another turned up um a couple were from the discord some people from youtube joined up but yeah it's just so great just to see people and to interact with people uh, i think one thing i was really missing in world of warcraft was that sense of community it, it, there, there are communities in world of warcraft but everything is is under underpinned by this this sense of progression and what's your stats what's your score what's your gear score what's your you know you're playing an unperforming class you need to play this class and there's just so much pressure and everything's meeting the benchmarks and here i'm just having fun and i'm really enjoying it so far i'm gonna end the video here but thanks everyone who's made it to day four if this is your first day or your fourth day i super do appreciate it i'm, I'm loving the game loving the community and I can't wait for day five. So thank you so much and I'll catch you in the next one.